believe it's nine o'clock, so we'll <coughs> bring this uh, meeting of the special meeting of the Commissioner's Court of Titus County to order. <coughs> it's on the 25th of uh, September at nine o'clock, and we'll start with invocation. Jimmy, would you like to lead us in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just come to you. Thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. Lord, I <coughs> thank you for the rain that, that uh, came through last night, Lord, and, and uh, ask you, Lord, just to uh, those of us that didn't get it, we ask that you just uh, send some rain our way. And, uh, Lord, we just uh, ask you just to be with us as we uh, go into our court meeting this morning. Ask you just give us the words and the wisdom to do what's right and all for all of Titus County. Lord, just uh, be with our first responders and our service people and uh, watch over and take care of them bring them home safely to us lord lord uh, i ask you now just to uh, go with us as we go into this meeting and uh, give each and every one of us the wisdom that we need to do what needs to be done these things i ask in jesus name amen, amen. amen. i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Leslie, is this the only form you have for open comments? Okay. It's number one on the public comments and request for information on non agenda items in accordance with section 551.042, the Texas Open Meetings Act. And we have Mr. Steve Bolister. I believe he's the only one here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can just take that microphone there, Steve. It's, it's hard to hold it up there if you don't mind holding it. I know that's a rock star. But, uh, we'll try. We'll try to do it. Good morning. My name is Steve Bolster. My address is 1497 CR 3240 in Mount Pleasant. Phone number is 903-305-5408. You folks have a difficult decision to make. I understand that. I want to be clear that I have respect for the people that are first responders. To have a calling to be a firefighter or EMT running into harm's way, there are people that are have the DNA for it, and there are people that don't have the DNA for it. Absolutely. I don't have the DNA for it. I'm not an expert on fire safety. I'm not an expert on how to put out a fire. So with that said, I believe that they should be supported, firefighters, volunteers, and professionals. They should have the right equipment, they have the right training, and they should have support from the community. With that said, the city and county are servants to the taxpayers. This is not a discussion regarding the professionalism of our paid and volunteer fire department. Every taxpayer in the city and the county, I would hope, would want this to be a safe community that does its best to save lives, properties, and businesses. I've been following this issue since December of 2022. I got dragged in here, sitting in the back, it was a packed house, and I watched that we had a very big controversy that was brewing on this. After 10 months, I finally got to review the current agreement that we have. For the, uh, for, I believe it occurs from the city proposal. And it doesn't seem like much has changed on the proposal from what I knew back in December on the initial proposal. So there's an increase to 1.3 million with what appears to me to be less services to the county. And also in saying how the money is spent, how the county money is spent. Although there's three minute return protocols, it does also say in here that grass and vehicle fires are the responsibility of volunteers in the county. Or, and, I, and I'm, I don't have any other word, at the whim of the city to respond. That's a little crass, I don't mean to say that, but it's at their discretion whether to respond. 
someone brought up on social media that this is problematic during business hours uh, because people work, the volunteers work. So it's a question whether we'll be supported with grass fires or vehicles. That's problematic because there's approximately 812 farms in Titus County. Grass is our business. You burn grass, you're burning our structure, you're burning our livelihood. The vehicles that we use in the field are not cheap, they're not old, they're extremely expensive. When I'm rolling hay, I'm spending a quarter of a million dollars in capital as I'm rolling through there. That's a big chunk of my livelihood. The other glaring problem is that 50% of all capital expenditures are the responsibility of the county with no say, and they are the property of the city. That's a tough one for me, because I think that that's a problem because now you can never have any kind of control over what's going on with the county. In Titus County, this is not the only service where the city has been, I'll say, upsetting the apple cart. We've got a water issue that we're facing because we had, it's, I believe it's gotten down to a 24.5% increase in our water costs. And they're also negotiating with Chinese foreign nationals with 900 apartments that are supposed to be built between 271 and I-30 with a $30 million bond attached. How that got that far, I don't know, but it does need to be watched by us here in the county as to how that evolves. They also touted that they lowered the tax rate. They did, but the other side of it is that we've had 100% increase in our property values. We're gonna pay higher taxes this year. The city is probably gonna rake in between 40 and 60% of extra revenue. Additionally, at a minimum, in this proposal, there's a 7.5% increase every year if you can't come to an agreement with a mutual agreement on the increase. Well, 7.5 compounding, we see it doubles in 10 years. There are very few stockbrokers who actually can guarantee a 7.5% annual return, averaging for 10 years. To me, that's a little rich. And I think it's a bad agreement because there's a lot of loose ends on this agreement. The city and county should have a cooperative relationship. That should be absolutely paramount. We want people in the city to benefit as much as people in the county and it should be a community that thrives together. The county proposal that I did read actually puts more support to the city and county I've been told the county has committed that if they go through with that, they will support both the county and the city, regardless if the city is not reciprocal. The city costs should decrease, so the burden to the city should lower. People inside the county will be assured that a professional and volunteer fire department of firefighters show up every, at every fire regardless of whether it's grass, vehicle, or structure. Seven by 24. For me, that's huge. I don't want to have a question, is somebody going to show up? I don't want that. Finally, the cost for fire service that is proposed appears to be the same. And it looks like we would be supported regardless of the type of fire the cost to start this up, I believe you're taking advantage of some grants that maybe you can speak of a little bit more that help mitigate the capital expenditure of a startup of a county fire department. It looks also that there might be lower costs in the future. If it stays the same, we'll still be at a benefit. So in summary, I do support the county's proposal. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Thank you.
No other speakers. Okay. We'll move on to number two then. Consider and possibly approve the minutes from the September 11th, 2023 regular meeting of the Commissioner's Court. Make that motion. Got a motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to approve those minutes. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed? Carry unanimously. Number three, consider and approve reimbursement to Bowie Cash for <coughs> utility relocation related to the FM 1735 project as recommended by Lochner. I make a motion, we approve it. Got a motion made by Commissioner Parker to approve those fees. Second. And second by Commissioner Applewhite. Number four on the agenda was Ms. Holly Parker was concerning a mandate of vaccines and masks for private sector in Titus County. She is unable to make it today, so there's not going to be any, wouldn't be anything on that, so we'll just table that and let her come back at another time. Number five, consider and possibly approve, approve terminating the existing interlocal agreement for the fire protection services between the state of Texas, county of Titus, and city of Mount Pleasant, pursuant to section seven, without cause, by providing written notice of termination at least 12 months prior to the start of the next physical year. Any comments on that? I do. I, I agree with Mr. Bolster on this. Uh, correct me if I'm not uh, getting your name right. But uh, I think the county and the city should work together. I know there's been a long ongoing deal with one another. But I did talk to one of the councilmen the other day and they said that they think that we could get a 30 day extension on this deal before we uh, go with the one year out to give both entities a chance to, to look over these uh, contract again and hopefully come up with a revised contract that both of us could be in agreement with. Uh, I think we should give them a chance to to do that and uh, you know hopefully we can come up with something we can work out and work together on this. So that the current contract we got, Jeff, is is there things in there that, that you want to keep? There's there's things no, that I mean, in I, favor. Well, I want to take some stuff out of the current contract because I don't agree with the contract, like the seven and a half percent increase, and like he said, uh, the response to car fires and grass fires in the county. I don't like that, and I'm sure there's a few other things that we could come up with, but and have a, uh, a set uh, pay uh, across the board that doesn't go up, you know, for like at least a 10 years, whether right. it's 1.2 or whatever it is. I mean, whatever we come up with and agreeance on, so. That's the way I feel about it. So. But, so in other words, you don't like the contract? I, I don't okay. like the contract. I, I think we should keep it for 30 days and, and you know, before we take the, the one year out and hopefully we can hash this thing out within 30 days because I, I know they're willing to work with us. Uh, how do you feel about that, Ed? Do you think that could be done? Yes, uh, we should be right My, my purpose uh, to be here today is to <clears throat> listen and, and, and maybe answer questions. Uh, there's things in the contract we understand y'all don't like and some we don't like. Uh, the 7.5% increase, uh, I guess, was put in there um, to help the county with the Okay. Yeah, just okay. make it a little closer. You, uh, okay. We can hear you, just people on the video. Okay, I'm here. sorry. Um, the 7.5% increase was put in there in case we couldn't get a, a, a come to an agreement we since I've been here we've always come to an agreement uh, I think I called Judge Lee and said how about a hundred thousand increase he said how about 50 so we took 50 I mean it wasn't hard to come to an agreement uh, those these fires costs go up every year uh, I think the gentleman mentioned that maybe these costs could come down uh, I don't think they'll ever come down they'll just keep going up but um, uh, my purpose of being here was just to say, to let you all know that that uh, the, the uh, part in the contract that says that you, you got to let us know, it's a year from now, to let us know, uh, uh, it goes from September 30, so if you let us know in October, it'd be September 30 of 25. We want to tell you that we, we want to waive that. Uh, you don't have to rush to any decision. <laughs> you want to take 30 or 60 days more to, to study it and talk then that's fine and it, if whenever you decide uh, to do it it'd be a year from then so that's that's my purpose today and, and to answer questions but we're willing to talk to you uh, if you want to 
I, th I think you need to understand whether whether we cancel this contract or not. We're still that's not shutting the door on the city of Mount Pleasant. That's just in the, going through our contract and, and uh, going by our obligations of giving the year out. Uh, and then it gets into how it is written on the paper, and it is written on there. If it's not by the 25th, that it would be another year. And I know that that you're saying that, but you've got also got to have your council vote and uh, several different things to get that all approved. So. Uh, but go ahead. You know, Anybody we, else got a comment? We, we had this uh, come up with a contract situation, but it just keeps. It just we had to do a written report. We never got into any answers, and it just gets just prolonged. It's just, it's just prolonged too long. And uh, I talked to Chief McRae uh, Saturday, and I appreciate him calling me. But it's just you know we've got to have you know more protection because. We got a car fire or a grass fire, you know, like he said, it could burn up his whole uh, livelihood. livelihood. And uh, we've got to start somewhere, you know, like I said, we can negotiate after this here if we have to, that's fine. But we just can't keep dragging it off. It's, it's just drug on too long. Jim? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> first off, I want to say that there was a tractor fire out close to the interstate in my precinct last week. Mount Pleasant showed up with, with uh, a command vehicle, an engine, and three brush trucks, and six men. There's no way we can get that with the county fire department. Uh, they've always gone above and beyond what they have, what the contract has called for. And I've got a deal here that I want to read. Uh, that I, I've been studying about this all week, and uh, this is just some stuff that I have come up with. Uh, I need to say something before we jump into what I feel is a huge mistake. First, I want everyone to know that as an elected official, I feel an obligation to the citizens of Titus County to do my part to provide them the best fire protection and emergency services possible. I am very concerned about the safety and well-being when it comes to structure or grass fires, motor vehicle accidents, tractor and other farm-related incidents. Children or senior citizens that have wandered away, drowning where divers are needed, and many other things I have been involved in, involved with for 50 plus years. The city has always provided adequate personnel and apparatus for an emergency situation, as I have already mentioned. I doubt that very many citizens of Titus County know or uh, know any of this or even care unless they have an emergency situation where they had to use any of these services mentioned above. We have to be careful that when, we, when and if we start a county fire department that we are able to provide the same level of service that we are getting now. I don't want our county citizens to go one day without the best we can provide. I am not against a county fire department sometime in the future, but now is not the time. The city and county must work together for the good of all concerned. After all, we have to live together. We shop the same stores, go to the same restaurants, schools and churches and so forth. We must work together. You, you do understand that I'm not saying that they don't provide that, but you do understand in the contract that it says that they do not have to. You understand that? I understand that. So, but you're good with that being in the contract that they don't have to? I think it's something that we can negotiate. Well, uh, and well, that's I, one reason that, that I think we need to, to uh, ask them for a 30-day extension. And, and uh, once again, like I said, <clears throat> in, in that contract, what, what part of that contract are, are you lacking? I, the only thing that, that I've really got a problem with is, is the cost of it, and I think we can work on that. So the, you're saying the 7.5 percent? What, what part? It, I'm just it trying needs to figure to come out, out what part of the I contract. 7.5 needs to come out, uh, and, and uh, I think we just need to sit down, us and the council, not one or two of us, every one of us need to sit down and talk this over, and I think it can be done in 30 days. We'll do it. I, I, think, I feel like this has a, been a very unfair contract for Titus County ever since it's been impl implemented. Uh, I think that this 
today was to cancel the contract that we have now. And I think it ought to be canceled, and then we can work on a new contract if, if, we, if we come up with a contract. Because it's, the old contract is very unfavorable for the county for a lot of reasons. Well, what my question, Joe, is why can't we wait 30 days in, in, before we cancel it? We're going to cancel this contract no matter what because the way they're going now, you get a new contract is what you do. You don't use the same contract. This contract but, would be in the void either I, way. I understand that, but why can't we wait 30 days to do it? Why and and sit down and talk to them and see, by law, see what we told them we'd do it that, that deal and it don't make no difference. Whatever we negotiate is going to be a new contract. It's not going to be the old contract they're going on now. I, I, I don't agree with you. I'm sorry, but I don't agree with that. Okay. You, you agree that it's going to be the same contract? No. Okay. Well, that's what he's uh, uh, that's yeah, what he's I mean, this, contract will, this contract will be in, in just like it is right now for 30 days. But why for 30 days? This is this so is we what we can talk to them. This is what we've been going through and going through and going through. This is what happened the last year, right before the end of the year. They didn't, you didn't have a contract, and we had to sign this contract because we're going to be without a contract. So if we cancel the contract, we've got a couple months that they they certainly can bring us a proposal. We can sit down with them. This is not voted on if we're moving. I don't away think from we're them. the ones that's questioning it. I think we're the ones that need to sit down and make a proposal and take to them. We have. We have. Well, that, okay. So, okay. That's my opinion. I mean, this contract is, is not good at all for the county. And why would we want to renew a contract or even even extend it another 30 days when we can go ahead and propose of getting out of this a year? They got a year anyway because it's a year out. But go ahead and cancel this contract. And if they want to work something out, we can start a new contract then. That's my opinion. I, I disagree with that. I mean, but that's, I, I yeah, mean I, everybody's I'm got their own opinion. So. I, I want to work something out, but I don't want, want it to be uh, in the contract that, you know, the things that they, they got in there that we don't agree with. I, I want to come to an agreement well, on that. Stuff. That's why we all need to sit down and talk. We, we can't. You that's know. true, but even if we cancel this contract, it, this contract is just a contract that we're we're not comfortable with. It's not it's not really doing Titus County. It's it's one sided deal, and if we cancel this one, we can we can start up a new contract for the next year. This contract don't end till ne it, it all next year. It's one year out. I see I see what you're saying, but I still think it's it's. But how long is it going to take before we get this uh, all resolved? I mean, we've got 30 days right now that we think we can get this done. How long is it going to take us to put a fire department together? Well, how long, is, how long is it going to take the city council to get it back with us? Because well, last time it, it just took them. I just, well, I just really get it done and get it done fast. And okay. put it I, I think that's the fastest way to do it. I think it needs to be done immediately and, and uh, in fact, starting this week, if, if the council can can if we can get together that, and, and get a proposal and get to them, then I think it needs to be started this week, and by the end of October, we know what we're going to do, and we're going to know either way by the end of October. That's what I'm saying. We're still going to have to have a new contract, regardless. Regardless, I understand so this that. Just getting out of the old but contract. That's, just, that's giving them their 12-month notice, and if we negotiate it, we can have the contract. Hey, that's we want to negotiate all. That's 30, can. 60 days. There's no problem. I mean, we don't want. But to I just don't want to stay with the contract that we have at this time. That's my opinion. And that's my opinion also. Okay. So we'll entertain a motion. Because we got to work, if we're going to work on the contract, we need to start from day one right. and go. And after this contract we've got here is over, we can start here. And we've got, you know, I want to get on the ball with it. This contract can't. goes through October of next year. We're, this is not us getting out tomorrow. This is 12 months. Yeah, I understand that. But, but also, if. Uh, <clears throat> I had something on my mind I was fixing to say, and I don't forget what it was now. Uh, the, the, whole, the whole thing that I'm trying to say to you, Jimmy, if, if you don't like the 7.5%, that's in that contract. If you don't like the uh, one year out, that's in that contract. We're going to have to have a new contract regardless, whether we negotiate it in 30 yeah. days yeah. or 60 days. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, I, I understand exactly what, what and, you're saying. And I want you to understand fully that I'm not against negotiating for a new contract. But I, I, I don't feel good with this contract. You say you don't feel good with this contract. Well, so. one thing, and I just, it just come back to me what I was fixing to say. One thing that I, I see is if, if we cancel this one, 
Well, then the city council said, well, we're not, not in any big hurry to negotiate now. We've still got but another year. That's up to the city council. That ain't up but, to us. So. But if we, if we say we need to do it in October, by the end of October, then we've got 30 days that we've got all got to work together to get it done. So, no. But if you don't agree, you're stuck with that contract, right? Do what? But if you don't agree, you're stuck with that contract. No, not yes, in October. They hadn't voted on that contract. It had come today saying that they hadn't voted on that in, in council, that it's okay to get out of that 25. So then you get to lawyers, and the lawyers say, well, what are this and that? I just think it's a bad stand of contract that you don't agree with, so. I hate to get in the middle of your discussion there. Um, I think what uh, Commissioner Parker was trying to say is, uh, and saying uh, that I see clear that if it, we're both going to need the year, once we've got get given notice, we're going to need the year to, to make changes to so that we can do this so we won't have a lot of time once we try to negotiate and if it doesn't work out in 60 to 30 60 or so then we won't have the year to to, to make the plans so we're going to have to kick in gear as soon as we get the notice and uh, i think that if if we uh, ex extended it 30 or 60 days and and then we could negotiate then we were given notice and we give you the year you have a question, time Monica? Time okay. Um, uh, th that's all we're saying is that you extend it 30 or 60 days and you got a year when you give us the, the notice, we'll get both up, get after it. I know when we get the notice. This, this is the same thing that we went through in December with Commissioner Parchman and Commissioner Applewhite, and we, and we give another uh, almost $300,000 to the city for the one year out. Is that correct? I just want to make sure you, you right. knew uh, we're going to need so the year. So we're going to we, need the year. We'll get out of this con Are y'all, is the city going to negotiate us with us any? What now? If the, we get, we sign this here, say we're not going to go with this contract. Will the city go and help us? Uh, of course. Negotiate of, anyway? course. of course. Of okay. course. I'll make a motion to give a one year notice for cancel a fire contract with the city of Mount Pleasant. Got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell. Second. To, and a second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Aye. aye. All those opposed? Aye. No. I vote aye. So we'll give them their 12 month notice. And if they'd like to negotiate, Ed, we'd be more than happy to negotiate with you. But it'll have to be quickly because if we move forward, uh, once we put it in drive, we won't be putting it in reverse. Yeah, right. Number six, consider and possibly approve the first contract renewal with a PC inquiry vendor for the, provides the state automated victim notice services for the year beginning September the 1st, 2023. Barbara. Judge, this is a grant that the county's had for many, many years. It's a notification system for victims of crime. Um, we are just simply required for the commissioners to approve our continued participation. It's about $6,500 annually. There's not any major change to it. It's just that you need, I need your permission for us to continue. Get a motion for that? I'll make a motion. Got a motion by Commissioner Mitchell to approve that contract? Second. Second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Carry unanimously. Number seven, consider and possibly approve participating in the regional public defender for capital cases insurance with an annual cost of $7,382. Barbara, is it correct that we put like $7,000 into an account as well? Oh, we got 14,000 or something like that? We put $12,000 a year. 12,000. And we got $108,000 in that account. Okay. But that would, that's not nearly sufficient for, to right, cover for the a, cost for of a cost. Right. right. <clears throat> Is there any, we've already got that 12,000 something budgeted. Yes, sir. Is it possible, I know it's not on the agenda that way, to give the 7,000 for that uh, capital defendants uh, insurance policy and then move the rest of that over into that fund that we, yes, sir. we normally the keep? Yes, the court. We can have a budget amendment to do that. You guys understand what, what she's talking about there. We've been just putting 14,000 in there and with this, 12,000, I'm sorry. And with this, that would give $7,000. And I believe that's with Texas Tech University, or is that right? Um, 
You know, I don't remember exactly. What that does is we have it's a capital 11. murder case. It's capital murder region. case is going to run us a little over it's a million something dollars easily. It's the Regional Public Defender for Capital Cases. It's the official name of it. That and office it's, is in Anderson. It's out of Lubbock. And I think they work with uh, Texas Tech Law School and stuff to send lawyers here if there is a capital murder or something to that effect. John Mark has reviewed this. He's also sent it to David Cawley. Um, I think everybody's on the same page with it. I just want to make sure that we go ahead and, and since we've got that money budgeted, move that over to the uh, to that fund. <clears throat> yes, sir. Because I'll have that at the next meeting. You can get witnesses out of out of the country. You got to fly in. It's uh, capital murder can be a very big expense to the county. So we get a motion on that. I make a motion. I had a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to approve the public defender's capital case insurance. Second. Get a second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That will carry unanimously. Number eight, consider and possibly approve a two-year extension of computer services agreement with Brian Information Technology, formerly Kimbro, at a rate of $162,936 for one year and for $168,180 for a two-year in keeping with the <coughs> exemptions allowed under Chapter 262 of the Local Government Code. Barbara, you want to speak on that? Um, this is our information technology. It's Seth Bryan is the person that you are accustomed to contacting. He, con he works with every department within the county um, to, to maintain the computer services that we have. This is a contract that the county has had for, I believe, decades. It is um, commissioners in November of 2020, commissioners approved a discretionary sole source exemption for Cabro. The name of this business is changing. It's changing to um, Brian Information Technology LLC. It's simply an incorporation of their current business. That's the only thing that changes. Uh, they, oh, go ahead. they have given us a, uh, a specific set rate for two years, and the contract includes an automatic extension unless we give notice similar to the, to the one with the city. But it's based on the Consumer Price Index, which is an independent uh, source and not not a fixed amount. Is this service bid? Is it been bidded out, or is it just something that the person y'all use? No. It was something that was bid out, I believe, when it started, and since that time, we've declared them as sole source. Commissioners voted on that in November of 20. The reason behind that is because in order for someone to bid on it, Cabro would have to open up how the county does business with regard to cybersecurity and those kinds of things. Okay. So that was the reason why we decided it was in the best interest of and, the county not to open And they do a good service that. for us, no problems, they take care of Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They're, they're responsive even on the weekends. Monica's had to work with them, I think, some on the weekends. Does, does TAC bid that out as well? I couldn't hear you. Does TAC bid this out as well? They know what the community, what the counties do. Um, I don't, I've, I'm not aware of anything that TAC has. And the, and the rate is is uh, six thousand more for two years. No, the first year it's one sixty two nine thirty six, and year two is one sixty eight one eighty. It's a fixed increase for those two, and after that, it's the consumer price in index. Consider a motion. Make a motion we approve this. Got a motion made by Commissioner Parchman to approve this with Capro or now Brian Information Technology. Second. Got a second by Commissioner Parker. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed. Number nine, approve oil and written reports of the county officials. Make a motion to approve. Got a motion made by Commissioner Parchman to approve those. Second. Second by Commissioner Mitchell. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Number 10, considering possibly accept the treasurer report as a matter of record. I make a motion. Got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to approve the treasurer's report as a matter of record. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Number 11, approve the budget amendments. Um, Judge Cooper and Commissioners, you have an email that I sent to you early last week. It's our final year in budget amendment. So the list is long. 
um, for the first items, it's all things that are in and out within a particular department with the exception of a few items. Those items actually total, uh, let me find my page, $101,163. The main reason for that is because of the use of utilities, water and electricity over the course of this summer that has been so very hot. So you have those things in email. Um, I'll be happy to go over those. Um, uh, it's a cell phone increase for the county judge's office of $170. That's simply due to the change between Monica and James Webster when he was there. Um, publications, $1,500. That's the newspaper publications for the items we have to put in there related to the tax rate and the budget and all those things. And those costs are going up and up. There's some talk at the state level that they may remove that from the newspaper and put it on websites. I don't think that will ever really fly because there are so many of us who prefer to get it in a hard copy. <coughs> but in any case, th that does increase. The insurance for the volunteer fire department equi equipment went up $200. And then within the former ARPA funds, this is the one that there are, there's no, there's changes to individual line items, but the net impact is zero. There's no money here that's part of that $101,000. County court, we had to increase translating costs. Um, you're aware of how our uh, demographics are in the county, and so we have to have translations more. For district court, we had to increase the other litigation costs, $7,345. That is due to um, specialty kinds of things, psychological evaluations, uh, bringing in um, expert witnesses, those kinds of things. Uh, we had increases to FICA and Medicare for the JP1 and JP2. $32 for the county attorney's office. That's for auto repair expense, but it is a line item we had not used in the past. The same thing with the district attorney. There's $97 there for meals. The treasurer um, had an increase of dental insurance. That's due to the when Sharon Reynolds was moved over to the treasurer. And then Mrs. Applewhite had requested a, de a decrease to other expense and an increase to travel expense for the training that she's going to be attending. And then we get to the electricity for the courthouse repair, which was 12,000. Uh, repairs and maintenance, 34,000. Lawn maintenance, $2,260. Um, the extension office, electricity, 1625. Five-star uh, volunteer and Nortex uh, needed increases to their volunteers. They actually um, uh, had more volunteers come than the $5,000 we had budgeted. So it's 500 additional dollars for five-star and 1,200 for Nortex. In the sheriff's office, we had a $2,000 increase to jail supplies, $22,000 increase to electricity, $1,800 increase to uh, gas, and then an $8,400 increase to the telecom for inmates. That that item is a large number, but it will be offset with the revenue that we get from that. It we get a, a revenue, month later. right. Yes, sir. Um, juvenile probation, the liability insurance went up $125. Waste station had some additional repairs of $675. Envi environmental, uh, $47 for meals and $110 for cell phone. Barbara, before, before you go, I don't mean to interrupt you, but on the waste station, does that have the that air conditioner included in those at, at, that we had to get out there, is that a different one? That's a different one. Different expense, okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think we have a purchase order on that one. Do we have a purchase order on that one? On which one? Uh, on the waste station, the air conditioner? That was way back. Oh, it was way back? First of the year. Well, so usually we put those right. somewhere else. We do not put them with that. Yes, okay. Sir. Yes. Okay, human services, utilities at the mill center, $1,425. County agents, FICA changes, and then $1,000 for utilities brings us to $101,163 from our contingency fund, which leaves the contingency at $1,283,328. All of the rest of these are items that are special revenue. These funds can only be used for these specific items because they're designated that way. The first one is the uh, local and tribal council grant funds, the additional $50,000 that we just received. We do have that money now. We've received it. It's something that next year, obviously next year, it's October 1st is here, we'll need to make a decision as to how we want to spend those funds. They can be spent like ARPA funds. We have $100,000 sitting there that we've not yet made a plan for. We can use those at the, at the uh, commissioner's court discretion. Uh, precinct 1, Road and Bridge. 
uh, you know, we had we, we separated the overtime that was paid as a result of the storm, but we've not been notified of any grant opportunities, so we're going to have to cover that. So it's $718 for our Precinct 1 um, overtime disaster salaries, $300 for electricity, and then we reduced the, road, the other road materials by $1,018. In Precinct 2, the overtime disaster salaries were $150 and then uh, increased to miscellaneous of $4,425. Uh, in Precinct 3, the overtime disaster salaries were $8,875, electricity was $250, and a reduction to road oil of $9,125. Part, part of that is being that Argo was the one that got hit the hardest with the storm, yes. so that's going to be yes. why that figure is so much yes, different. I think, think you got Hill two storms, didn't you? Didn't you get Sugar two Hill storms? and Argo, yes. 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 In Precinct 4, the overtime disaster salaries were 2,569, supplies 580, and a reduction of road materials of $3,149. Um, then we get this, this next one seems like, you know, it's a $5 budget amendment, but because it's a grant, we have to do that. So the HAVA grant, it's Help Americans Vote Act for the elections office, um, had a remaining balance of $5,000. That grant has been closed out so that that money will be transferred just to general county. County clerk archives, we have an increase of $11,800. Uh, there's about $240,000 in that fund that can only be used for archiving. These are old things from uh, prior years that did not get billed for some reason. So we've gone back, thank you, Leslie. She's done the research and checked on those and it, it is something that the county owes, so we'll, we need a budget amendment for that. The sheriff forfeiture fund, now the sheriff can spend these and he's personally responsible for the management of these funds, but when I came to work we started budgeting those because I, it's important that the public and you as commissioners are aware of how those funds are spent. This is just another expense item. It's, um, it's some uniforms for um, you know, the, the officers there, $8,300. The commissary fund, $1,900 increase to the laundry line item, and also an increase of the transfer in from the canteen. The way it works, it's a little confusing, but the canteen sells the items to the inmates, and the public can come in and put funds on their loved ones or you know whoever they want to's uh, accounts. And then at, at, if a profit is made, and the profit is, we usually make a profit, since I've been here we've always made a profit, and for many years before that, then those funds are transferred to the commissary fund to be used for the benefit of the uh, inmates. So it's a little confusing, but it's the way it's required to be set up. We also have a $1 budget amendment for debt service. You know, we talked about debt service is not a grant, but it's taxes. And the interest expense that we pay on one of those bonds, most of them are whole numbers, but one of them is, is a, a large amount and 25 cents. I've been budgeting the whole numbers. We need to budget for the actual amount. So I, I don't want to start budgeting for 25 cents. We'll just budget a dollar so that it's even. So it's one dollar in to interest expense and a one dollar reduction in the paying agents fees. That's what we pay uh, the banks that manage, make those payments to the bondholders. Um, on the 2004 right away capital project, that's the FM 1735, we need an increase of $100 to legal fees and a reduction from miscellaneous costs of $100. The canteen store, because the commissary increased in the canteen, has to, we have to increase what they're going to pay out by the same amount, $97,425. And then the maintenance barn, uh, we have changes to hospital insurance, all the benefits, uniforms, cell phone, uh, and $150 for other expense and building maintenance. The employee benefit items are related to James Webster being a part of that now, and that is funded through the use of the maintenance barn fund balance. The reason I sent this to you earlier is because it's a lot. That's low. But it's our end of year, and um, as far as I'm aware, we're, we're ready to go for our audit, and we should have another successful audit year. All right, we we'll accept Thank the you. motion. Approve the motion. motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to approve those budget amendments. Second. Second by Commissioner Mitchell. All those in favor? Uh, All those opposed? Number 12, sign the pay orders and approve the payments. Make a motion to pay our bills. Jimmy makes a motion to pay the uh, orders and approve payments. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. Number 13, closing statements. Jeff? None done. Jody? 
closing no. statements? The, uh, the, uh, out here at the, uh, oh, out here, the part of the building out here. Ag you know, Extension Ag building. Ag Center. They've asked us to, uh, if they come out this week and put some, uh, fix or drive their uh, driveway, I don't know if, if we could get together and, like yeah, said, we'll we, help you anyway. You're like talking said, about we, uh, the Agra Life. Bag man, yeah. 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 And, uh, Jeff had a good deal about, you know, putting that, what do you call it, that stuff on top of that wrap? That, uh, uh, oh, is that sealer, that primer emulsion mm -hmm. on top of it? He said it would keep them off a day, it would uh, it'd make a good driveway. Y'all figure out day. what day's good for y'all. The 27th is when he wants it done, huh? but he's got a lot of, the 27th of this month. Yeah, they want it 27, 28. But the thing about it is, we got a lot of prep work to do before then. Well, Are they yeah. going to move out of the way? They, all that big pile of mulch. Well, that's what I told them they had to move. I they, they told them they had to move them. Yeah. And uh, they would move it, but we would put that, you know, all we had to have up there, we'd have to sweep it off, we had to have a roller. Right. And a, 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 excuse me, a blade. And then we put that spray on there and let it, and keep them off for one day and it'll set up. Yeah. I think that'd be the cheapest we're out to go on that. It'd be a good route. It'll, you know, it'll they, they don't too. clean the, uh, whatever we, the, uh, the, the shaving, they don't get them out. We won't do that part. But we okay. can, you know, go ahead and get that, get it done because they got a big, big, a big month in October with a bunch of third and fourth graders coming the 17th or the 10th, right. something like that. Well, you, I mean, you coordinate it, and, and we'll, I mean, I have people, I'll help you any way we can. And I'm not sure anybody, any other. other. What budget would that be coming out of? Huh? Well, how will we do that in the budget as that far as expenses? Park the money. Yes, we have, we have $5,000 <coughs> set aside to do that, that parking lot. Okay. It was an item that we had as weight. But if you're prepared to move forward with that. Right. We, we've got some money also for those talco roads, and we need to figure out what yeah, we're going well, to do we with we those. Can. If y'all can't get to them, then yeah, uh, get over five thousand dollars on that. So we actually have to come up with something. I bet it's going to be more than five thousand. Oh yeah. yeah, on that on that on part oil. Oil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oil. Yeah. Well, like I said, it needs to be done. It's eroded pretty bad. We need some, you know, probably pack some iron or some of those crevices. Yeah. But we need to. They used to he was calling me, and I told him that we would uh, work out something to help them over the parking lot. Because they do a lot of good for our kids in the community. In the, in the, in the county, in the too. County. Yeah. And they, they, they've got a top-notch bunch of people out there. It's helped a lot of kids. <clears throat> Absolutely. And, a, and, a, and, a, and a gardeners, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Jimmy? The uh, only thing I would like to suggest is that we... Uh, get together sometime by the end of this week and, and talk this deal over and see what we can do. On Possibly by Friday. On the fire contract. Yeah, on the fire contract. And see what we can do. And also the fire starting Wednesday. And uh, I'd like to invite everybody to come out and enjoy it. Okay. I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Parker uh, for helping us with the dump trucks on the uh, elections office over there getting that concrete out of the way for us and uh, got that smooth and hopefully nobody's going to trip and fall going in there. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell and y'all's help, uh, your precinct, helping us over behind the probation office with that rock and, and making that look a whole lot nicer. Uh, I know your, uh, people out in your community are happy about a chip cereal road that y'all have done out there and, and getting lots of good comments on, on all our commissioners and I appreciate that. It's a whole lot easier when my phone don't ring about y'all's roads because I'm not over roads. <laughs> I, I appreciate y'all and all you do on your road so uh, with that being said appreciate everybody and uh, all y'all guys work and uh, what y'all have been doing out in the county for us on our road so with that being said I'll uh, motion yeah. can I just do a clarification on number three for the uh, boat cap mm -hmm. uh, it was not five four zero Five, 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 five. 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 That's fine. All right. With that being said, yeah, I'll uh, tell you what to say now. But we, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot what I was saying. I'll entertain I'm a motion to adjourn this. I'll make a make motion to adjourn. I got a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to Second. adjourn. Second by Commissioner Parchment. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, close it. Nine.